Hi there, it's Nicole here today with a Magic Color Slider card featuring the Lawn Fawn Magic Color Slider die set and several other stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn. This is a super fun interactive die set that makes color sliders, which is fantastic for creating kind of a peekaboo type of card scene, which is so super fun. When you have it closed, you see the outline of the images. When you pull the slider, you get to see the color inside. It's just a super fun interactive technique. For the background of my card here today, I'm gonna to take the snowy backdrop and instead of using it the tra traditional way, I'm gonna create a sandwich with my number one tab from my Big Shot, my bottom cutting plate, the die face up, the paper I'm using, the cardstock, and then my silicone mat, and then the other um, black mat for embossing. This is going to make the die emboss rather than die cut through the paper. So instead of having all those little star and circle openings um, for the snowy backdrop, which I know it's called snowy backdrop, but I wanted it to kind of look like a night sky, it's going to emboss them instead so I won't need to put another paper back behind for a contrasting design. Once I have done that, I'm simply gonna trim this down because it didn't cut the outside line either. This whole backdrop is A2 sized at four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I trimmed it with my paper trimmer and then I'm adding some shading around the edges with black soot and chip sapphire distress inks. This is just to help make it look a little bit more like a night sky and give it a little bit of depth and dimension. Next, I am gonna take the um, Starry Colors water-based pigments and pick them up with a water brush marker filled with a little bit of water and I'm picking up that white gold color and simply coloring in all those embossed areas just around the edges because the magic color slider will be covering those up and if i had planned it a little bit further in advance most of the bottom of the card wouldn't have needed these as well since i'm going to cover it up with some clouds but that was kind of a last minute addition to the card and originally i was just going to have the slider in the middle but i decided to add a few more elements this is going to give just another element to the card that is fairly flat, at least on the base layer, but it's going to really help accentuate those stars in the sky. Kind of give it more of that galaxy-like look that I'm going for, especially since I'm using the Upon a Star stamps and dies from Lawn Fawn. And these stamps and dies definitely have that, you know, look out looking at the stars kind of feel. This doesn't have to be perfect. The stars are a little tricky to color. You're just getting a little color on them and it really adds a lot to the background panel. I did this first before doing the magic color slider because I want this to set aside and dry. It's not gonna stay wet for very long. There's not a ton of water, but that way it can be completely dry while I work on the magic color slider. Now my magic color slider videos tend to be a little longer simply because there are a lot of steps for this or, or more steps. It's a little bit different than maybe something you've done before. I have pre die cut all of my components. There is a die in the magic color slider die that will cut your transparency piece for the window. This is the die right here. I die cut my transparency piece plus my white piece that I'm gonna stamp on. The window dies are the oval, which I'm using today, a heart, and then that rounded rectangle. There's some accessory pieces as well. And then this is the magic color slider. The, the side with the tab is the side you wanna cut your window from. That It's just a tiny bit bigger or longer than the other one, and it just is going to work out perfectly. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trace the area that's actually gonna be visible in the slider, so that oval shape on my background panel. That way I know exactly where I need to stamp my images. Here is the slider and also the track piece. And I cut the track from the same color of cardstock as I use for the magic color slider because I don't want a different piece to, or a different color cardstock to be shown when you look at it from the side. 
So back to that oval, this is where I'm going to stamp anything that I want to be seen in the magic color slider. If it does not fit within this oval, it's not going to be seen. That's why I just draw myself a little cheating line. You can erase it, or actually I'm going to cover it up with ink so I didn't even have to erase it. But this is where the magic comes in. You really want to use some sort of a stamp positioner tool because you need to stamp whatever is going to be on the inside of the slider on the transparency and it needs to be exact so that it lines up. I stamped my fox first. I am creating masks for my images. This is going to help with any overlap that I might have with stamping and it will also um, serve to help keep them safe, keep those images you know, safe from ink when I ink the background. I'm going to switch out my paper now without switching the stamp to the transparency, ink up the image with stays on ink this time, and stamp the transparency. Now it didn't stamp that well. It looks like my stays on ink needs to be refilled a little bit. So I'm going to stamp it a couple times, but the stamp positioner makes it so easy to stamp it perfectly every single time. So there's my fox. Now to clean the stays on, I like to use Ultra Clean on a scrubber pad. Clean my stamp really good, and I know my stamp's out of the screen there, sorry about that. And then wipe it dry and wipe it down with the Lawn Fawn Chamois. And that's going to make for a really clean stamp. So I'm going to do that each time I switch and want to put my stamp away. That way my stamps stay clean. Next I'm going to stamp the bunny. Same thing, I've switched back to my white paper now or my white card stock. I'm going to stamp that with the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I can stamp it a couple times to get a perfectly stamped image. I'll need a mask for this as well. And then I will stamp the exact same thing on the transparency. And I can move those masks back and forth if I need to, but make sure you use stays on ink with the transparency because it's not going to smear. If you would happen to make a little mistake, a little trick is you can take the Stays On Ultra, or not the Stays On, the Hero Arts Ultra Clean Cleaner with a, just put a little spray of it on a paper towel and you can wipe your transparency clean and start over. That way you don't waste your transparency. For my background, I'm going to take some of these constellations now from the Upon a Star stamp set and stamp a constellation and then some stars around it. And I decided, I tried to use more than one constellation and I just didn't think it was gonna work. The heart really is what I wanted there. So instead of any other of the constellations, I'm just gonna use stars all around this. And I want it to be pretty full. It's going to make for a really fun background. When you slide that up, you're gonna be able to see a really fun, colorful, little critters staring out into the night sky. I am stamping the images on the white cardstock with Versamark ink and then heat embossing with white embossing powder. That way when I go and apply the ink to the background I can do some embossed resist and the constellations are going to stay white in the sky. While I was doing this I actually stamped everything on the transparency with the black stays on, including the constellations. So kind of ignore that when I get to that part. I actually had to go back and redo it and do those in white, just the constellations and stars, so that way the black doesn't cover up the white that I did for the background. And it looks much better, plus you can still see it even when that slider's closed. I'm going to sprinkle on my white embossing powder and then heat set that, and I did heat set it after I stamped each section because I'm going to have to go back and forth a few times to get everything stamped on both the, the background and the transparency. If you don't want to do so much work on the transparency, you could leave some of that as a mystery as when you slide it up, you could see more of the constellations. With my masks in place, I'm going to go ahead and ink up this background using chipped sapphire and black soot ink. These are the same ink colors I used, used to distress the edges of the uh, background panel for my card. Kind of a nice gradient from black to blue. I wanted it to look like a night sky. 
and I'm kind of just dabbing it on there. My mask kept trying to roll up on one of the fox's ears, so I'm trying to be a little careful with my inking so I don't get too much ink underneath that mask. It'll be hard to cover up with my Copic markers. So I'll start now with my black soot down here near the bottom and just kind of blend those until I get a nice seamless transition from one color to the other. And you want to make sure that anything that's going to be visible in the window is colored and inked. I went ahead and did the whole rectangle panel even though some of it won't show. I'm going to remove those masks and then just kind of take a look, make sure everything looks good. Take a paper towel, buff any ink that might be sitting on top of any of the embossed areas off. That's going to also serve to make those nice and bright white. Color in my images with some Copic markers. Pretty quick coloring here. But this definitely makes a huge difference. This is where when you slide up the Magic Color Slider, you get to see that color like slowly emerge. And it's just so super fun. I think it's really fun for the recipient and just a great interactive technique. This die set makes it so easy. I was so intimidated by Magic Color Sliders until this die set came along. I like to have it done for me and it's so easy when all of the dies, all the pieces are right there. So coloring in the fox, I'm going to leave the tip of his tail. It actually isn't going to be seen in this particular card so there's no sense in coloring it. Go ahead and color my bunny with some warm grays. Now my darkest warm gray color, I'm actually gonna go around my images and just kind of fill in anywhere that maybe my distress inks missed kind of right next to those images when I was inking with the masks. Finish coloring in the cute little bunny really quick. The brown colors I used are E09, 13, and 15. The warm grays are warm gray 00, 2, 4, and 6 with R20 for the nose. Just add a few more little details there and my coloring will be all done. Now I'm going to take that same white gold pigment and just color in the center of the stars in the heart constellation add little touches. It's going to be a little bit glittery. What's important on the inside of your slider is you don't want any dimension. So you don't want to die cut these images. It's really important to mask. It's going to make your slider slide so much better if you don't have any embellishment or dimension on the inside. So I went ahead and adhered that inside of the Magic Color Slider. And I've got my transparency here. I've got the track I'll go ahead and add the track. I'm adding score tape, which is a nice strong adhesive, to both sides of the track. You need that on both sides. One side is going to be adhered to the back of the Magic Color Slider and the other side will be attached to the front of the Magic Color Slider. And the sliding mechanism, will it slides along this track. This is what keeps it in place and helps it slide up and down really easily. So I'll go ahead and just attach that there. It makes it easier. I should have put the slider in real quick just to make sure that everything is lining up correctly. So I'll just pull that up and that way I can check it up at the top and that looks perfect. So there is my track, there's my slider. I can go ahead and take my score tape now and go around the window opening. And this is what is going to attach the transparency to the front of the Magic Color Slider. So the background is adhered to the back of the Magic Color Slider, the transparency to the front, and the sliding mechanism goes in between the two. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go around that whole opening. Since it's rounded, I kind of like to tear it into little strips. Now to hold that in place, it's really important to get this lined up perfectly. So I'm going to line that up, hold it in place with post-it tape, take the backing off of the score tape, press that down, pop that back up and just pull my post-it tape out and everything should line up perfectly. So when you pull up the magic color slider, you get to see that little scene. Now I haven't attached that, that's why it's sliding around a little bit. 
which is good because I actually had to go back and stamp everything in white which you see here, which looks so much better. Now on the top of the little pull tab, one of my favorite stamp sets from the summer 2017 release is the Push Here stamp set because it has those great little interactive greetings. So I stamped Pull Here and that tells you that you need to pull there. I took the other side off the score tape and attached the magic color slider and it's all ready to go. It's time to finish up the card. I've got a couple of borders die cut from vellum and smooth white cardstock using the Puffy Cloud border dies. Go ahead and attach the vellum border first. That's going to be on the background. Next, the magic color slider will go, and then finally the white cloud border. Now, I think the magic color slider looks a little plain with such a beautiful starry sky it really stands out. So to make it blend in to the background just a little bit better, I'm gonna take some Delicata Silver Ink and some Lawn Fawn Yeti White Ink and stamp stars from the Upon a Star stamp set all around the Magic Color Slider here on the front. And that's gonna add some really great interest and help disguise it a little bit better. On the white cloudy border, I'm gonna take greetings from the Upon a Star stamp set stamp a couple of those words or phrases with the Blue Jay Lawn Fawn ink. Then I will switch that out and take the scripty word wish and use that with the Delicata Silver ink so my greeting will read, make a wish upon a star. I love two-tone greetings and the Misty makes it easy to line them up perfectly. This border is going to be attached to my card base with a little foam adhesive because the magic color slider has a little dimension to it it's not going to, that border wouldn't lay flat if i just tried to attach it as is so i'm going to put a little strip of foam tape along the bottom edge and the sides and that's going to kind of frame up if you will the bottom of the card so that the magic color slider just sits inside there and the card will lay flat. I'll go ahead and pull off that backing paper, pop that border with my sentiment on the bottom of the card. And now it's time to add a few finishing touches, add this whole panel to a top fold card base and finish up the card. I am adding a combination of Pretty Pink Posh, Mini Silver Star Confetti and Sparkling Clear Sequins all around the card. It's going to add to the sparkle. The color palette is very simple when that color slider is not open. So little details that you can add to the card, add interest to it until the recipient can get it and pull it up and show the great coloring and whatever's going on inside that magic color slider. So this is just a little assortment of embellishments all over the front of the design. I'm just adding those kind of all over for continuity. I'll take some glossy accents and put that or place that in the center of the stars in the heart constellation. Gives it a little bit of dimension, a little bit of gloss, adds some additional interest to the card design. And then I'll take some Simon Says Stamp Google Eye stickers and place those on the bunny on front of the transparency so that when you open it you can see it and when you close when it's closed you can see it thanks for joining me for this video tutorial on using the lawn fawn magic color slider dies the supplies i used are listed and linked below the video here on youtube here are a couple more videos you might be interested in thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time